<laughs> well, hello and welcome to this video. <laughs> the only video that really is, unless I want to uh, try and validate past ideas I have in my mind of other videos or uh, try and anticipate videos in the future. This moment, this experience of making a video of the dream of making a video. It's the entirety of life. It, it's everything. Everything is here and now. If we're looking at it through the eyes of meditation as, an, as a practice, then the here and the now where everything is, is an internal process that transcends the limitation of consciousness. Um, and that's, of course, uh, you know, that's the object of the exercise when you're uh, pursuing a spiritual discipline is to have a non-linear, non-temporal experience. So learning firstly of the here and the now on the physical plane, no past, no future, just here and now. And then utilizing that same application in meditation to let go of this thought or that thought and be in the I am and simply to stay where I am in my mind or God is. And uh, as Jesus says in the Bible, be still and know that I am God. That's an action of mind. Everything is an action of mind. Being still is an action of mind. Um, I did want to, um, or I was prompted to, I'm not sure. It was just like t two nows ago. <laughs> two nows ago, three nows ago. How many How many is three, really? Like the infinitely nows ago, <laughs> as I was walking from that room into this room to, to do a video, apparently it gets really fine, doesn't it? It gets really tricky. Um, I thought I'd do a video to back up my teaching or the or the the live the Facebook live that I did, which I'm not sure if I can upload that to YouTube. I did a Facebook live last night about charging money for healing and uh, why you would want to get beyond that idea of charging money as quickly as possible and just be giving this away for free, just be offering this for free. Now. I know some people are going to be thinking, well, you're asking money for the little books, et cetera, et cetera, and collecting money for that. Well, those little books are given for free. They're given away for free. So in the idea of asking money so we can print them and give them out for free, it's really presenting an offering of an opportunity to say yes to participating in a certain way using money as a catalyst to help others. It's very simple. <laughs> there's no money, Tina and I get no money from that whatsoever. I mean, there's probably a little bit of money when we print these things uh, next week. I think they're going to the printer if Annie gets her uh, files to Tina in time. Um, there may be some money left over in the bank account and uh, that'll sit there until the next lot of printing of books is required or whatever is required in the fulfilment of whatever it comes along as being... Uh, for the greater good, which is what that account is for. Um, I guess one of the things with the idea of money and charging money for healing, and as I said in my video last night, I've heard from so many people over the years have told me, oh, well, I couldn't function as a spiritual healer if I didn't charge money. What a lot of baloney, you know, and we have to charge money to cover the costs of the venue and you know the 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 food and whatever we're putting on for this three day extravaganza this seminar we need a new microphone it's like well the money comes right so if you've got the companion or the um what is it the addendum or whatever to a course in miracles the supplement i think it's called it's a very thin little green book um supplement to a course in miracles if you've got the latest edition of the Foundation for Inner Peace Course in Miracles, that their version, the original version, they've put everything all into the one book now, which I think is fantastic. 
used to be that you would buy the book, you'd have the uh, text workbook and teacher's manual. And then you, if you wanted, you could buy the little green supplement, which was specifically for psychiatrists, psychotherapists and psychic practitioners or, or psychological practitioners. And also had a good segment in there about prayer. And one of the things addressed in that was money, right? Obviously, if you're putting out that book targeting psychotherapists and counsellors and people like that, professional people, they're in it for the money. They're not in it because, you know, like they go to university, fair enough, they spend all their money to do that to help people. There's got to be some way for them to continue to help people. So money, you know, wages and people pay bills and whatever. But there are many branches of the tree of salvation that offer this in certain ways. When you get to the point where you realize yourself and recognize yourself as a teacher of God, as a minister of God, you've been through your discipleship, your apostleship, and now you're a free range chicken and you just, <laughs> you know, you're doing your thing with it. Um, You don't reach that state. You don't reach that state of revelation readiness unless you've been through the process, the, purif the purifying process of living your life in faith. It's like Jesus says in, course in, in, in the Bible, unless a man lives by faith alone, he shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's not just 2,000 years ago. That's now ago. That's now, now ago. And now, now ago. And now, now, now ago. <laughs> it's always... Right? Because this is a, a journey of faith, which is why um, I always get quite assertive and quite passionate about wanting to present the um, opportunity in giving this for free to others and in trusting God to be the supply for whatever it is that is needed for how that's to come about. If you need a function hall, if you need accommodation, if you need whatever, it will be supplied. You don't have to put your hand out and ask or charge accommodation fees or charge admission fees, sell tickets, none of that. Right? And you could you could say to me, well, it's just easier if we do it that way. And it's like, well, this isn't about easier. The sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept atonement for themselves. And it's like, okay, well... I'm accepting atonement for myself. There's no one out there I'm teaching. The people that are out there are simply presenting me with the opportunity to hear what it is I need to learn. And if they're presenting me an opportunity to let go of my idea of poverty consciousness and then trust the universe to be my supply for how it is that I'm thinking that these things should come about to present this message to others. You know, it's like, it's all cockamamie, this whole Course in Miracles community. There's a whole online community of people that you'll see their little um, profile pictures. Sometimes there'll be a dozen of them or more, all presenting some three-day seminar, all smiling like this. And, you know, the famous names and the not-so-famous names and the ones you probably might not have ever heard of who are trying to make themselves famous, maybe. I don't know, just projecting there a little bit. Um, that's not what this is about. That is not what this is about, right? Accepting atonement for myself means being honest about where I find myself with the idea of being in service to humanity right? and allowing myself to be guided by that. Now, that doesn't have to look like anything specific or maybe it can look like something specific, but I guarantee you, if I'm listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the script is already written. If I'm listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the script is already written. Everything that I need can and will materialize for me to be able to present the message in a way to whoever it is that shows up in a way that I can hear it. Now, Jesus never had a function hall. I mean, I'm sure there was uh, synagogues and temples and uh, all sorts of things he could have uh, gone in and uh, let me use let me use this to teach the masses you know but uh, jesus taught in the countryside 
majority of the workshops and things that I've put on and hundreds of them, hundreds, um, have uh, all come about miraculously, all come about by um, being gifted, being given, being presented with opportunities to do so in people's homes, in uh, community halls, in public spaces, in my own house, you know, like just... And over the years, 25, 26 years, thousands of people have presented themselves to me because I'm stupid. <laughs> so I can hear what it is that I'm about as I offer it in the idea of teaching the universal curriculum or teaching a path to enlightenment or teaching a process of forgiveness. It's all the same thing. And each of those presentations, each of those persons that has shown up to represent my denial, to show me where it is that the teaching learning equilibrium needs to be adjusted in me through that action of forgiveness, um, they've brought a very powerful gift. How could I charge them money? I should pay them for the opportunity. And that's really, I mean, in the East, the Sadhus, the, the Shivites and, um, and such, they see that those who come to them are bringing them a gift and they extend their gratitude and their service because it is their indentured uh, uh, servitude to humanity that is required for them to be able to break free of the cycle of temporal reassociation or reincarnation, whatever you want to call it. And they fostered a complete attitude of gratitude to everyone for everything, as have I. I've never charged a cent for a, a healing session. I've never charged a cent for a workshop, some of them running for three days. I've put on a few seminars and done a few things, you know, around Australia here, not for quite some time now, but in, in every circumstance, um, in every circumstance, the manifestation of the particulars needed for that offering, for that presentation, have just miraculously shown up, have just miraculously presented themselves. I haven't had to ask for money. The Holy Spirit, knows nothing about buying and selling, reciprocity or giving in order to receive through a uh, secondary consideration such as money. And people will say, say, well, money's just in energy. Yes, it is. But why would I place the uh, particular uh, requisition of that energy in that particular form in front of my willingness to simply offer this as God offers this for out, without any charge, without any cost to whoever it is that truly asks uh, from the heart, you know, for it. God created me for giving, for giving, for extending, for expressing the light and love of reality. And in this world, that transfers as teaching and learning. Love is witnessed to through the idea of teaching and learning, held accountable by putting my finger on my nose and accepting atonement for myself. Otherwise, I can't possibly see love in the process. Right? Love in this world manifests and becomes witnessable to through the idea of healing. The love that feels like butterflies and I feel so good with this person, but not with that person. That's not love. That's bargaining, which isn't love. Love is unconditional. When you want to see it, you'll give it to see it without putting your hand out for money. You know, This is a journey of faith. You have to teach by example. You have to teach by example. And the time will come when uh, a, a leap of faith is needed to let go of poverty consciousness and to trust the universe so that you can step up to the plate and say uh, without any lie, without any deceit, without any form of arrogance that yes, less than 50, I'm sustained by the love of God across the board.
not just sustained in this bit and maybe not in that bit, sustained, sustained completely, whatever it is, whatever it takes, whatever is needed. God pays the bills. <laughs> God provides the opportunities to see that I'm supported by God. And so increase my faith and so increase my own sense of connectedness with not only my higher power, but my sense of self as witnessable to out in the world. I love you guys. I'm always going to say, um, if you're charging money for healing, you're not a true healer. I'm always going to say that. Because in essence, there's nothing to heal but you're not going to realise that until you actually allow yourself to undergo the fullness of your healing and love yourself, and I'm pointing my finger out there, <laughs> and, no one knows, and love yourself unconditionally in order to see it reflected back to you from the witnesses out there. Have faith. Have faith. Teach by example. You're teaching a path of faith. How can you teach it if you don't have it? Let go of orchestrating how you think things ought to look. Let go of deciding that somebody needs to pay you $2,000 to come and sit at your feet. <laughs> I mean, look at that, honestly. If I look at that, if I put my finger on my nose for that, it's repulsive. It's absolutely repulsive. But then ultimately it's nothing. But as an idea of uh, following Jesus and uh, giving up the world and following Jesus, I can imagine Jesus would say, get away from me, I do not know you. Oh. <laughs> he just said, yep, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus just reminded me of uh, a moment some years ago, many years ago now, when he said, uh, just out of the blue, audibly, he spoke to me and said, I will now support you in whatever you do on behalf of the sonship. <laughs> Somewhere I'd crossed an invisible line or been weighed in the balance and been thumbs up somewhere. And I know for me personally, I mean, it's forward and backward a bit sometimes, forwards a bit and backwards a bit. And it's like, that's just how it is. Some days brings bigger challenges than other days. And generally you just make a continual effort towards peace in all of your affairs. And eventually they all begin to line up in all the different seemingly various different and separated aspects of your life. But they're not really separated and they're not really different. But because we believe in separate, because I believe in separation and differences, that's how it has to play out so that I can see the falsity involved in that, uh, in that belief. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thank you. Um, I think I mentioned before, we are just waiting on a couple of files from Annie. Tina was going to contact her today. We are going to include in the little book a quote by my teacher, Ted, which wasn't in the last edition. It's going to be in this edition, which will be a lovely quote. Um, and then they're off to the printers. It seems to be dragging on a long time, but uh, anyway, we're getting there. All things by the grace of God. Peace.